Hey, Gil here, and today we're going to talk about creating some unique and cool shapes in Lightburn. Lightburn is amazing, but people keep getting trapped using only primitives and tracing to make their artwork. Right now, I'm working on a passion project for a class I'm giving locally here, and I'm going to use both the emblazer and Lightburn to put the finishing touches on this piece. And you, you're invited to come along for the ride. So I'm building a shooting model of Thunderbird 1 from the TV show Thunderbirds. This TV show was around in the 60s, and I loved it as a child. So when I was asked to give this class, it was just a natural progression that I would go and build the rocket plane that inspired me so much when I was a kid. Now, total transparency here. In another life, I used to be a cinematographer. And as a kid, I used to love the TV show Thunderbirds. So it made total sense that if I needed to, to build a shooting model, that it should be the rocket plane that I love so much. When researching about this model, I noticed a whole bunch of detail on the lower stabilizing wings on the engine. When I took a closer look, I realized that these speed stripes had a really unique shape, and I wasn't confident that I'd be able to mask them out by hand every time in equal distance. So this is where I'm going to use Lightburn and my emblazer to make painting masks to make sure that I get the same result every time. So let's jump into Lightburn and I'm going to show you how I created these paint masks by using the tools to create unique shapes. Five. So here we are in Lightburn. We know what we've got to do. We're looking at creating those blue, I guess they're speed stripes on the wingtips that are attached to the big engines on Thunderbird 1. So let's get into it. Let's do this. Now I'm going to share with you my workflow in being able to create the masks because I need four masks for each wingtip, two on the front, two at the back. And if I were to do it by hand, I wouldn't be able to get the placement exact in the same way than creating some paint masks using my laser, the Blazer 2 and Lightburn. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I get a lot of requests about how to free draw in Lightburn. And a lot of people, like to use light burn they use the primitives we've got a square we've got a circle you know we can pull that, that circle out to be an ellipse or we can hold down the shift key and make it you know we can just scale it um we also have this amazing polygon which is kind of well let me get the polygon first let me uh, polygon's kind of like the key shape you can make all other shapes out of this one let me get rid of these for a second let me show you a few tricks here so First of all, you've got the polygon. Polygon comes up. And if you go into the shape properties that's just over here, we can actually make it a triangle. So I know a lot of people draw out triangles. If you have a triangle or you want a triangle, you can just basically scale down the sides to three. That makes a triangle. So you know what happens. You know you know what's coming up next, right? Then if I add a fourth, that's my square. And of course, then we've got you know the pentagon, the pentagram, the whole thing and you can just keep adding sides to it in fact you can keep adding sides if you if you start you can see it's starting to turn into a circle if we do 200 actually i think it's 99 is the uh, no what is it 50 oh no it, it, what's what is the maximum let's go find out we had 21 22 28 30 this is 40 so at 40 sides uh you actually get a circle and that's as many sides as you can add in. So again, a lot of people get very creative with it. It's awesome to see. You can actually go and take a, a, a shape or, you know, this is now scalable, but we can stretch it, we can squash it. We can go into kind of these arrays and start making almost like those uh, spirograph images. Uh, it's awesome. We've got auto rotate, we can change stuff. Uh, we can make multiple copies. This, you know, I've seen a lot of artwork based on this sort of, you know, using these two tools. I I think it's awesome. But what happens if you've got something really specific, something that you really want to work with? Well, I came into Lightburn to make these masks and I got a little tripped up. 
So I'm going to share with you how I did it and how I would do it with the workflow that is best for Lightburn. So here's an image that I have with some measurements that I took from my model. I know how big or approximately how big the wingtips are only because they are actually a three dimensional shape. They're not flat. So I have to add a little bit, uh, a few mils here and there just to make sure that they fit well, but that gives me a space. So let's start playing around with the idea. And this is exactly how I started. I took my pen tool and this drawing that I'm gonna do live is not to, not to scale, but I basically created a center line and then realized that I had to go down and then I, I went up a bit that side and then I came in and you know I kind of and I did this by step by step you can see I'm I actually joined all these things but I'm actually going to grab this really quickly and do that second line because this is something that I learned and I was like okay great now I have my basic shape now how am I going to get that curve right now I actually want I'm going to show you exactly what I did the first time I actually did the second one let's go up here and then I actually, you know, I was so nervous uh, trying to do this free drawing for the very first time, I added this up. And what I realized, and, and now I've learned how to fix it, is that if you actually select these shapes, these lines, these are connected, these are not. And, the, and the, so I went, no problems, I can get my curve. I'm gonna go get a circle, right? Because I'm thinking Illustrator, and I'm gonna go, you know what? I'm gonna go grab that circle and that looks roundabout right. Let's go back again. Let's make that. And I'm going to move that into position. Right. And you can make this work. You can kind of sit here and just place it on there. And I'm like, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to grab him. And I'm going to scale him back. And then I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to grab him and I'm going to scale him down. And I'm like, great, now I gotta get rid of the circle. I gotta get rid of the rest of this. And I was just like, holy crap, how am I gonna do that? This is exactly where I got stuck the last time as well, because I you know, kind of wanna get that, but it's kind of stuck here. So let me show you a even faster way of being able to do this. And because of the fact, well, I'm gonna show you multiple ways. You're right, I'm just gonna show you multiple ways. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna extend these lines out again. And now that I know <laughs> what I'm doing, because it's all about playing, right? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna attach those. Even though these pieces are not attached. Oh, see, they're attached now. That was what I, that was, that's interesting. It auto attached them. That's fantastic. Let's go back because originally when I did this, it wasn't, right? It wasn't attached. And again, I get a lot of people asking me the same questions and they're like, hey man, how do I attach things? So there is an auto join function. Let me bring this back. Great. So now we have one piece, two pieces, four, and the other two pieces. So what you can actually do is you can select them all and up here in edit, you have the auto join selected shapes. Awesome. And at this point, we can use the tool over here Called radius. And if I click this section here, no, oh, wow, you see, now it won't do it. That's because they're not joined. Gil, come on, man. You know better than this. So let's uh let's come back in. Ah, I see what's going on here. And this is where it gets really freaking fiddly. Really fiddly, because now they're all joined up together. Uh Let's see, is there an edit? Let me go and see. Um, close paths with tolerance. Let's see if we can do that. Let's go. No, it won't, it won't do it. So we'll just, we'll go back. We'll just undo all that work. That amazing work that we did. All right. That's better. Let's go in here and let's actually join it. Oh, wow, this is so fiddly. This is too much work, guys. So you can see, you can see this is exactly the workflow that I was using. It was just so painful. Now let's, let's see if we can do this now. Let's join, auto join them again. And again, I'm showing this because 
these are the sort of things that when you're starting out, out with light burn, these are the real kind of issues that, that comes in. Let's see, radius. See, it'll do a radius here. Watch this, see? It'll do it there, but this one isn't joined. And this is this is the pain in the ass, right? That that ends up uh, you know stopping your workflow right here because it's not exact. And because we've joined them, we can, we can fiddle with it as much as we want. The truth of the matter is I'm gonna go back again when I make sure that they're separate. Let's go back and I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. Is to actually go into node. Excellent. And that's, we'll zoom in and we will snap that node on there. And now if we, we can see now that that is also a join piece. Again, it's real simple. Once you know how to do it, we're gonna auto join them again. And now if we go to radius, we're gonna radius out that piece. And you can see I've got now my curve that's also on the piece. I'm gonna make that just a little bigger, just for the sake of it, just so we can see here. So I have the piece that I've, that, you know, I've drawn it out, but I don't know if it's exact. So I'm gonna show you, that's a very fast way. If you're, if you're basically doing it freehand, it doesn't have to be exact. It does not meeting up something. If you just wanna make some really kind of unique shapes, uh, this is a great way to do it. We can also select all of it now I'm going to copy it, right? I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to also show you here how to actually arrange it. So we're going to flip it vertical. So, and then we'll just, you know, we can use the tools to be able to just go align. So now I have the two shapes that I need, but I don't know if it's accurate. So how about we get rid of these and I'm going to show you another technique on how to make sure that you can get pinpoint accuracy using the same kind of methodology uh, within Lightburn. And I actually think this is a lot faster to, to be able to do it. I'm also using a new tool that came out a few versions uh, back, which are right here. These are two tool layers. I'm gonna select a tool layer. I'm gonna just grab a quick box and, and just put it on the work area. And you can see in the cuts and layers that this tool layer is simply to lay out. It's nothing to do with actually sending any information to the laser. So this is a really fast way. Before the tool layer came out, I used to have a layer that I would put all my measurements on and then just make sure that I had the output turned off. And sometimes I made the mistake of actually sending that layer to the laser. So in this case, uh, tool layers, you've got two of them, you've got T1 and T2. Those tool layers uh, are great for making sure that you've got exact measurements in there. And again, going back to my sketch that, I, that you can see right here, you can see I have a number of measurements that I took with a pair of calipers. Now, my shape is actually a wing, so it's not flat. So I'm gonna add a little bit. You can see I, I marked out uh, you know, different measurements because I wanted to make sure that I was getting it right. I've added a little bit. I've taken away from a little, a little bit, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rebuild that left-hand side wing mask and we're gonna do it with to the measurements that we can see on this uh, on the sketch. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the width of this selected box. We're gonna make it 45. And I'm gonna make the height of it 50. And that's gonna give me a box. It didn't change it too much, but that box is pretty much gonna be my work area. So at this point, let's grab another square, I'm just gonna put them here. It doesn't have to be too big. And what I'm gonna do is the height here is going to be the height of where I've got to draw a line. That's gonna be my kind of end point. So the height is gonna be nine mil. The width doesn't need to be anything large, but I'm just gonna make it five so it's just universal. And I can see here now that I have that box. I'm gonna select that box. I'm just gonna drag it over here and I'm just gonna go into it just a little bit so I can just make sure. Now I know there's a snapping, there you go. I just held down the uh, the shift just so that, th these boxes are a little small, so we just wanna make sure that they are coming in at the right distance. Now I can duplicate this box, it's not gonna be a problem, so let's, uh, but I'm gonna just grab another, actually I'm just gonna make this, put this in the center so you guys can see. I'm just gonna grab another, another square, 
we're going to make the width five because we're going to keep it universal. And uh, in this case, we're going to go up to 17 because that's the the, the length of, of how high before the slope begins at the top. And again, I'm just going to move it into place. And what's really interesting, again, I want to show you this is that, you know, we're working pretty far off. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, man, this is totally, you know, aligned and stuff like that. But when you go in, you can see there's a bit of a, bit of a, uh, a distance. So, you know, I know that there's a more of a snapping, hang on a second. And I'm gonna just, I wanna get this like razor tight and it is. Four. <laughs> Hey, I'm just gonna take a moment here to let you know that if you like these type of projects and laser information, that we do a whole bunch of videos on this channel. And not only that, we do a, a bi-weekly live stream called the Laser Live Stream, where you can get involved live, ask your questions, be part of the community. It all happens here on this YouTube channel. So if you like this, hit that subscribe button, that bell icon, and make sure that all your alerts are turned on so that you don't miss any of the videos and live streams coming straight for you. And we'll see you there. So now I've got, let's uh, go back and let's zoom in. So now I have actually all the sides and all, does anyone else have, I always get confused with how to zoom in correctly. So right now I've got two boxes just so that I know what's going on. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put some labels on here. Also put, do it in the, uh, in the tool layer. Whoa, no, I don't want that. I want it 10 mil please. And then, uh, let's go here. Let's do that. Great. So that's nine mil. Wow, that's really big. So let's go make that five. Excellent. That's what I want to do. And again, this is just so that when I'm looking at my sketch, I also know what's going on. And this, actually, <laughs> I did it in the wrong place. Aha. This nine mil is this box right here. And then the 17 mil is right here. So I like just giving myself as much information as possible. So I now know the coordinates of everything where it begins and where it starts. It's not going to be a problem. So let's go grab my pen tool and I'm going to grab the pen tool. And you can see that right at that point, the icon changed. So I know I'm on it. And you see, I do this all the time. And so I wanted to do it on purpose for you too. I didn't change the layer. So I want to actually go in and hit this black layer, which is double zero, which is the first cut layer that I want to put together. And again, I'm going to make sure that I am on the bullseye and you can see when I hit up, hit the button here in the cut layer over here, I now have the line. So this is going to have my speed, my power, my output. So this is actually what I'm sending to the laser. So that's awesome. So let's uh, continue that. And I know that that line is not going to be joined. So we'll join that later. I'm going to come down to where it says nine mil. And there we are, because we got that crosshairs. So I know that that's the nine mil. Then I've got to come across here, come into that corner, and then I'm going to come back up here as well. So, I mean, it sounds pretty simple. I'm sure you're like, Gil, cool. You're cooking with gas, no problems. If I select this line, I see that it is also uh, not connected. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and select all of them. Just go up to edit uh, and auto join, which is also uh, option J done that as well and in this case I'm going to just turn off the tool layer and by turning off the tool layer if I ever need it it's still there I've still got it it's all good just because this is something that I do you don't have to do this but I actually I'm going to move this around on on the workspace so I'm going to just grab all of this and I'm actually going to group it which means that if I select one of them but then I'm going to turn that off and what that means is that if I decide I want to move this down to where the origin point is, because this is where I'm going to start my laser. If I want to go back and make any adjustments, those tool layer options are there. So I can always go back and, and, and work with it. Now I've got one other thing to, that I've got to do to this, and that is bring the radius in here. So I'm going to go to my radius. Now I'm going to select it. I know it's 11. So I'm going to come in here and he says, I'm going to select, what's going on here? Is it not going to work for me? 
what's going on? Let's see. Oh, it doesn't like it. Wow. All right. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. No. It's it's there. Let's go to the radius tool. Oh my. Why is it not going not doing that? Is it gonna do it to this one? Damn it. it oh, because I'm on the tool. I'm sorry. I'm on the I selected the tool layer. That's the other thing you gotta worry about. There you go. I'm like, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. All right. Let's select the tool layer. Oh, smarty pants that I am, maybe because I've selected and grouped them. Let's go. Let's go here. And let's ungroup them for a second. Got it. Got you gotta you gotta be careful. It gets finicky. And again, that's one of the things I want to show you guys. There we go. There we go. So we've got we've got the shape. We've got now that beautiful curve which we saw on the original model. And again, you know, doing this live with you guys, I'm learning, you know. At the same time, if we group it, we couldn't get that radius in. So at this point, I'm going to group both of them. Um, and I guess just keep uh, keep an eye on when you group it, right? I'm just going to show you guys again. If I hit the radius, it won't allow me. It won't allow that tool. So you've got to be away from the tool tool layer to be able to do that, which I think is really, really interesting. So just be aware of it. But now I've got this mask. It's ready to go. All I need to do now is just move it into place, which we're gonna do. So I'm gonna move it that close. Now I'm gonna duplicate it. Let's, uh, let's reset the work area. Let's go in a bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight it. I'm gonna copy and paste it. And now I need to flip it around. So we're gonna do the same thing we did last time, which is tools, sorry, arrange, Flip horizontal, which is also Command Shift H, All right? I'm just gonna move it out a little bit, and I want to make sure that they're both on the same level. So I'm gonna use the align. So now we've got it, perfect. And now I'm gonna make four of these masks. I'm gonna do each wing in the laser, uh, each time. In the, well, not separately, but I'm going to make a set. So it's one wing set at a time. And I need four, two at the front, two at the back. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm actually going to select all of these. And I'm going to use the, uh, basically the grid array tool. Now, the, this is the new version. So we can actually make a virtual array. So we can make an extra one that way. Wow, it's really far out. So I'm going to uh, uh, total... Hang on a second. What's going on? <laughs> oh, I see what's going on. Again, because of the tool line, because of that tool, you know what? It depends. If you don't want to do it as a tool thing, I get what, what you're saying. I'm going to ungroup it because I just realized using that that, that tool uh, functionality, really, because it's extended this out this way, it's kind of made it a little miserable for me. So I'm going to just select both these and then let's go and... There you go. That's what I wanted to do. Now you can make it a virtual array, which means in the in the new area, if I go and I change this at all, it changes all the rest of it as well, which is kind of cool. I personally, I'm not going to do it this time because I just <laughs> I'm going to do it the way I know how to do it. So let's uh, let's select these. I'm going to turn off the create virtual array. He says, and let's actually also make another column. And there you go. I now have this job all ready to go, ready to send it to the emblazer. So you know what? Let me go grab my supplies. Let me show you how I'm going to set this up by cutting some normal masking tape. And we're going to do that right now. Three. Okay. So we have a piece of glass. I'm using the glass because I glass passes through with a laser and it allows me to put something else. And I'm actually using this. This is a large, thick part of uh, masking tape. And the masking tape is gonna be what we're gonna make the actual mask out of. So let's do that. Let's go grab a piece of masking tape. Here it is. And all I'm gonna do, work out approximately how much I need. And I'm going to just line it up on this, on this piece of glass. And from here, I'm now going to take this to the laser.
two. All right, so here we go. We've got the plate. You can see here, we've got the masks. I'm gonna show you how that actually looks by just pulling off the masking tape. Now I do keep this masking tape. I use it for other things. But you can see here, the little winglets that are cut all, all the way through. I'm gonna try and keep it there. Give me one second here. Yeah, there you go. And you're gonna see why I'm gonna do that in a second. Just kind of, some people call this weeding. We're weeding the design out from the stuff we don't need. And you can see how crisp using the laser was to cut these. I mean, I could have done this by hand using strips, but it's so awesome that I've got it this way. So these are the four masks, I'm, because I'm gonna do, this is the actual piece. This is the piece for Thunderbird 1's uh, wing. So I'm going to uh, now put these masks on. You can see the over here though, you can see that the tops of these are missing. That's okay, I did that on purpose. That's due to two main reasons. The first one being that, um, that, that the, the, the tape wasn't wide enough. Just put that one down. And the second reason is I can actually modify that later. So I'm gonna just, what I do is I try to eyeball this every time. So I kind of know where this, where I want the line to start. I got some junk on here that I didn't realize I had. And I try to bring that all the way up. And you can see there, I do have to extend that out a little bit, but I now have one of those pieces mask very fast very quick let me grab the next piece off the glass I'm gonna do that off camera just because well, just because you know it gets fiddly so now you can see here I've got the corner take that off I'm going to place this again round about where I want it to be and you can push and pull this tape. That's why I use masking tape. A lot of people like, get okay, why don't you use like, you know, this, this special stuff you can use and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, well, because I like to adjust it. I like to adjust it. You can see, I like that edge, but I need to kind of push and pull a little bit. So let's see. Let's see if I can do this right. It's hard enough to do it <laughs> without the camera on at times. But there you go. That's right. So I'm looking at it now. Uh, I'm not worried about the buckle. That corner I've got to clean up a little bit. I can either clean that up, which I'm going to do right now by just rolling that tape back out, placing it down, and I'll put a little piece of, of tape just there to crisp it up. But I like that. To me, what do you think? What do you, what do you guys think? You know, it's a little bit, I can see in the camera here, it's looking a little bit off. That's okay. I can, I can adjust it again. When I put those th those extensions on the tip, I can just bring that in just a touch. This one probably just needs a little bit of finessing. So let's see. And again, this is what I love about this. Just, you know, you just place it where you need. Just pull it down a little bit sharper. You've got to take a look at it. Mm, maybe just a little bit up, a little bit further. That's it. Let me go and see. I'm trying to do this for the camera more than where my head is. And you can see there. Yep. I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, yeah. So let's do the back, back part of it. Let's go grab the other mask. Grab that. Now I've got a little bit of a section here. So the section right there. So it's going to throw it out a little bit. But let's see what we can do. See what we can do, and I, I use the other side just to quickly get kind of a placement. And of course, you know, there's one. Just looking at it from both sides here, and we're looking good. Let's do the other one really fast. And of course, if, if you had to do multiple models, this is just so cool, such a cool way of being able to do it. I'm also going to Grab that just over there, hold it down and just kind of pull the tape the way I need it to be, <laughs> not the way it wants to be, the way I need it to be. And you can see the shape changed a little bit. That's because this is a three dimensional shape. It's not flat. So again, I'm gonna use the tape that, um, that came off the thing and I'm just gonna, that, that one's not good. It's not good at all. 
but I'm just going to change that a little bit and um, and bring it up. But basically, I like what I'm seeing. I'm just going to spray these areas, that blue color, and then what I'll do is I'll bring it back here and I'll show you what it looks like with the whole model done. Wow, that perspective in the camera makes it look like it's a little out. But let me tell you, probably need to adjust that, or I could even cut that little piece there, but to my eye, it's looking good. Let's go on to painting it. One. Thunderbirds are go. And here are the results. We now have four wings. Uh, this one has a little bit of bleed under it, but I'm, I'm actually not too worried about it. Let me hold it from, from that side. You've got those sides, you've got the back as well. Um, you know what? I'm really, really happy with this. It, a lot more than I expected. I did try to shoot some footage of uh, using the airbrush, but I couldn't hold the airbrush and the camera, so I do apologize for that. But uh, I now have four sets of wings that are going to pass. Now, Thunderbird 1 is relatively dirty anyway, so I, it's not perfect. It's, it's definitely not, you know, this is a bespoke model. This is uh, something that I'm making um, for a class. I've, I've got to move quickly on it. Um, am I 100% happy with it? I'm not trying to make excuses, but... I really wish that I had a little bit more time uh, because I, I would have picked probably a different masking tape. I did get a little bit of bleed under there and I had to go in and touch them up. But I'm incredibly happy with the results that uh, came out, especially since I can replicate it. If I'm really not happy about it, I could always repaint them and use those masks again. But to be honest with you, I think they look fantastic. And you know what? They even look better on the model. So how about we go and show you what this all looks like together? And here we have it, my model of Thunderbird 1, or at least as much as I've been able to get done. You can see the wings attached to the lower part. We're going to move up here. See the fuel tank, the main body. The wings need to go in as well. And the red nose cone. So I'm pretty proud of what we've been able to create. And, you know, using all the different things that I've been able to, to get a hold of. You can see it's sitting there on my desk. This is where I come to you with the laser live stream. You can see my computer there as well. That is my model of Thunderbird 1. She's pretty big and I'm looking forward to being able to teach people how to make her work or at least uh, make her look like she's flying around on camera. And of course the irony of this is that the Thunderbirds show used all in-camera effects and we're actually going to be using a green screen, but I don't care. It was a great example and a great reason. The last thing I need to do on Thunderbird 1 is really, really simple. And that is to go and actually put the other markings on, which I'll be using my emblazer, which you can see to the right hand side. Uh, and you can see a little bit of my uh, office all messed up because my office is constantly in a state of flux as I'm doing all my projects. So there you go, guys. That's Thunderbird 1. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial with a little bit more practical means than just show, learning a skill. And guys, you know what? We love to talk about projects and share what we do here on the laser live stream that happens twice a month. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that we can, uh, we can still connect, share your projects. And I look forward to showing you a little bit more about what Lightburn and the Emblazer can do. I'll catch you guys soon.